This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? I am so excited. I'm actually doing what I said I was going to do. Planting snow crocuses, 200 of them, because last year I had about 15 over here, and they are always a surprise when they bloom. We get a couple days when we get some nice sun, and then in the afternoon, boom, up they come, beautiful little blue flowers with wonderful orange anthers. And I wrote myself a note, I, and it said 200 snow crocuses, and that's what I've got in here. You can still be planting bulbs all the way up until the ground freezes, and you should be. I'm going to finish this job, which should take about, I don't know, a half hour, but we need to talk about this. Those were hostas, and the deer are just having a field day all over the garden and even inside the vegetable garden, so that's the next stop. I'll see you over there. Come on, snow crocuses. Can't wait to see you bloom. It's been 18 years that I've had this vegetable garden to myself without any deer problems, but they started jumping in, and so that's why I put this up here. That's one of the reasons I left the 4x4 so tall, wondering if they'd ever want to jump in, but they never have. Well, <laughs> last week I looked around, and they were in here, and they've been eating stuff, so I put 50-pound fishing line around the outside, and it's actually kept them out. Uh, if you do this in your garden, this is almost invisible, so you need to put some streamers on it, but the deer have found it, and now we've got another problem with the deer. This is the rut, and they're after the small trees, so let's go take a look at that. Well, this time of the year when the bucks are running, and as I told you, this is my worst year for the deer, and a buck came in here and took its antlers and started rubbing up and down this tree. That's how they marked their territory. Now, back in the day, we used to cover this all with some tree goop, but we don't do that anymore. Experts tell us, let it heal naturally, but once they start rubbing, they're probably going to come back and rub some more. So we need to physically stop the deer from getting to this. And all I'm using is this is a gutter guard. But you could set up a few stakes and some fence. And we only have to leave this on here for about another month until the so-called rut is over with, until the bucks aren't chasing the does anymore. But they can't stand this texture. They're going to be confused when they come, and they're not going to want to rub the tree. And that's what we want to happen. And not much to this. We're just going to cover this up and I do want to show you <laughs> one more kind of funny thing that the deer have done over in another part of the garden there that's going to look good at least it's going to keep them off here well first off before we get to our deer issue you can see we haven't got a frost yet and it's you know mid-november that's pretty amazing these will come into the greenhouse at some point but I'm enjoying them until it'll be that that day when we get the warning of cold weather I'll take this in but I was so excited about planting this shrub, and I was planting this viburnum, because the deer don't like it, for the birds, because it has berries all over it. Well, <laughs> deer don't like the, the leaves, but <laughs> they love the berries. There's one berry left on here, uh, which I was hoping the birds were going to enjoy, and so our deer problems <laughs> persist, but what can you do? You know, I probably should have had this sprayed with some deer repellent, but I, again, it's a viburnum. Deer don't like that. All right, we got a few more jobs to get done. Well, the best thing I ever did was trade in my old gas mower for this electric one. And next spring, you could do the same if you're interested. That gas power mower I had was on its last legs. I got a nice credit for this. And this thing is so lightweight, and it works great, runs on a battery. And we're talking all about our leaves today and what to do with them. You don't have to rake them or blow them off the lawn. You could just mulch them with your mower. Leaves in the garden can just be left there. They're going to rot down, and just we're just mimicking nature. When we do that, they'll rot down, make compost, and they're a great place for beneficial insects to overwinter. So let's get to work on this. We're going to shred as many leaves as we can. Now, you hear people say, oh, fall is my most favorite time of the year. James and I live in an oak forest. It's not our favorite time of the year. <laughs> 
All right, now I'll have to do this a couple more times because as you can see, only about 25% of the leaves are down. If they're covering the lawn and gonna smother it, in that case, we will have to blow them off. But in the most cases, shredding them like this will be the best thing we can do for next year's lawn. Got a couple more things to look at. And one is this tree back here, which is one of my favorites. When things do calm down in the garden, we do have time to reflect. And as I said, I wanted to show you my favorite tree on the property. This is a Dawn Redwood, and it's a deciduous conifer, which is really cool. Fast grower, easy to find, beautiful bark. It does look like a redwood. And as you can see, the green needles are starting to turn this bronze color. Eventually they'll fall off. They do make a great mulch too. And I've got one more thing to look at that's just so beautiful in the vegetable garden. So many of us are growing milkweed to try and help the monarch butterflies. And they look so beautiful when the seed pods crack open and we get to see these seeds. Now they're really hard to germinate inside under light. So I'm just hoping that they'll fall to the ground and mother nature will take care of things and we'll have more milkweed. It's great to still be out in the garden. You should be too, planting bulbs, trees, and shrubs. Still time to do that. Maybe even find a cold weather crop and stick it in a cold frame or under a floating row cover. Now check me out online. That's where you can find more blog posts, be part of Everybody Gardens. and have a very special story there related to Veterans Day about a guy who's been growing a tomato that was found on a battlefield in World War II. Check it out. We'll see you next week.